Um, before we turn it over to the audience to ask some questions, um, I just want to give everybody one last chance. Uh, what would you like uh, anybody to know that we haven't actually discussed here? Is there any uh, parting thoughts before we turn it over for audience questions? We can just go down the line. Hmm. <laughs> parting thoughts. Uh, I would, again, I'd just say if, if you have any um, hesitations on contributing, I think sitting down and visiting with um, Dan and Toby and others from DNR would really help you see the big picture and understand the um, security measures, the encryption that is going into this tool to make sure that your data will always remain secure um, and will be completely autonomous, uh, aggregated up, and that's truly how we're all going to gain insights. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think the other thing that's worth mentioning is we went through a pretty uh, a pretty robust uh, RFP process, and we evaluated several incumbents in this space, and some that people in the room probably work with and that have been in the space for a while. And one of the things that I think was part of the decision to go with DNR was that they've done this before, they've done it successfully, um, but also they weren't burdened by pre-existing connections and relationships in this industry. Um, and so that, that transition for them into this space um, was a challenge, I think, probably on their side a little bit, but also an opportunity for us to be, um, as distributors, critically important to their success and their growth, right, is they're reliant on us for part of their growth business model, and so they're very invested in this success, um, whereas some other potential, uh, potential vendors were, um, have other relationships and other interests, so we, we kind of shied away from that and made sure that, um, that we could be very, very comfortable with the motivations and the promises of security. And I guess I would share, um, as one of the uh, smaller distributors up here, um, I, again, I, I alluded to it before, you know, some of you don't have this, the analysts on your staff to do this sort of work. And by your participation in it, you get, it's basically your, you get to play on the same level as all the large distributors. It, it levels that playing field for us. And um, it, it and without adding the additional staff and the money and the energy and the time that it takes to do this sort of analytics, so it to me it's a win-win situation. You submit your data, you get all this information. It's interpreted for you, and then they come alongside you and and will even give you help you along with interpreting it. And if you don't know how to apply it, uh, not that you know you don't because you guys are all great business owners. But um, and then again, it takes the mystique away from. Um, the forecasting, you know, I know the conversations going on in these meetings right now, you know, we're hearing from our suppliers what they think is going to be happening in the marketplace. Well, now, as Sherry alluded to, now we have data to sh tell them that's nice to know that that's what you're thinking, but this is what our numbers are showing. And it kind of changes the conversation a little bit. From my perspective, I'll say that uh, how we take a look at third-party vendors is do they walk the walk? Um, I know from a, a data, uh, being anonymous, uh, I would love to have data for Wyoming, North Dakota, and South Dakota, uh, but we just don't have the participation there. And I know that DNR won't, won't allow that to go out until, until we have it, uh, which is a testament to them. Uh, the other thing is that in terms of being very responsive and having a distributor call and say, can you explain what this graph means? Or I'm not sure what this data represents. Uh, they've always been very, very responsive, been willing to pick up the phone and have that conversation. And so for that, I think they've been a great party to Hardy and also the participants as well. Well, and I will say, um, obviously, you can talk to, we have, we're out by the booth. Um, Erica uh, from NAD uh, will certainly be out there, she's right there standing. Um, she can certainly help you get signed up, start along the process, and answer any of the uh, sort of uh, questions that might come up that I can't answer as an outside party, but she certainly has the answers. So if the audience isn't going to ask us a question, can we ask the audience a question? <laughs> sure <I> can. can. <laughs> Are we making up the rules as we go here? Yeah. So just level of interest in something like this. Is anybody willing to kind of talk about their level of interest, their next steps for their organization to kind of be involved in this tool? I, I would answer that yes. I, I don't know what the categories are any other, though. I don't know how. My name is Tim York, and I'm with PowerMation. Um, 
I would need to know more about the categories that you broke other into and if they made any relative sense in our market. I was going to ask a question on whether you guys have the NEMA trading areas in your software. So, yeah, I can answer that question. We were just, <laughs> Joanne and I just had a long conversation about this actually last week. Um, so the nice part, twofold here, the nice part about this being NAD driven is we want that exact feedback. If that is something of the, that is desired, um, the answer is undoubtedly yes. Uh, basically, any organization of zip codes, we're happy to make that work for the membership. And so um, uh, the software is being designed and tailored for NAAD, which means that they, the task force and NAAD staff get to drive what that looks like. So if that's how people want to look at it, that's what we'll report as long as it meets our reporting requirements. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and as far as the product goes, um, we have some product hierarchy uh, information that I think we're probably able to share at this point, right? It's not 100%. We're still tweaking and trying to figure out exactly how to make the, the, you know, the last pieces make sense. Um, but we've, we've gone a couple of levels deep um, in terms of that higher, uh, hierarchy and the categorization to ensure that we're not just getting kind of the top level and then have to stop. Um, and it's pretty broad. We had a good representation on the task force that um, I think we were at 112 or 133 second level categories or subcategories, subclassifications, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think we're, we're probably close to being able to share that. And those are the categories we want to get to, but that depends upon your participation. That influences that. Is there anything anybody's particularly concerned about that we haven't talked about that would be a reason that you would not be interested in participating? What do you consider the critical mass number of customers? Yeah, do you want to? I certainly, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, you know, we've been doing a lot of analysis around that lately. Um, uh, the answer will be, uh, I hate to say it depends, but it depends on what we see in the data. Um, you know, things like your standard statistical test on how different are people, what the makeup of the distributors that actually sign up. So for instance, a large national for maybe versus a, a regional player or differing product categories. Um, the short answer would be we want as many people as possible to participate. Um, and we're going to report as quickly as we can, as long as we feel it's one, we can keep the confidentiality of who participates, uh, keep them anonymous. And two, we feel it's accurate because reporting Bad data is worse than reporting no data at all. So um, that is one of my main responsibilities on this project, certainly, um, to look at that and look at how many we think. Um, I'll use the counter example of uh, you know, what we've done for Hardy just because that's a known quantity. So I can talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, they have, we have over 100 distributors participating in that project right now. Um, that allows us to do most states, but even there, it, you know, and again, it's a different makeup. Uh, as Dan mentioned, it's, it's a slightly more fractured market on how regional players and nationals, uh, and particularly for unitary products specifically. Um, but you know, if, if that's the sort of target we're talking about, there's no reason that we couldn't go down to um, state or MSA level at that, at that range, uh, depending upon, of course, who ends, who ends up participating. How many of you are, are not using a, a market data tool now? Okay, so all, everybody in the room is using something now. I know there's a couple products out there. Epicor has one and, okay. This would be a tool that is more, is designed as Sherry has said, by the distributor for the distributor, whereas the tools that are out there now are from the manufacturer's perspectives. So that does give you additional insights and information that you could use in a way that is more meaningful for your business. I will say that we've used the data and gone back to our manufacturers because we are held accountable for our market share and our market share growth. So if there's one region where the manufacturer says, wow, the, you know, the market's grown by 20% over the course of the last you know, 12 months, and we look at the data and say, well, I'm not sure how that can be since we have the dominant market share and we've only grown X. Uh, so also having that kind of as a, a, a second look at market share has helped us in a lot of our conversations with our, our manufacturers. Erica, Bethany, anything you would like to add? Oh, um. Um, I will say that I've been working with the task force 
for, we've been working together now for, it's on. We're working together now for 18 months, and they just don't show up every once in a while. We talk all the time about the development of this particular program, and they have a lot of skin in the game. They've been very thoughtful about how this is going to work and how it's going to work best for distributors. So I really have to give it to them because they're the ones driving this whole thing. So thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? I, I'm sorry, one question. When you say 100 distributors in Hardy, what percent of them so, yeah, I can talk a little bit about that, too. So um, in Hardy, I think at the last uh, count, there's what is it, about 450 wholesale members. Yeah, and so for, for just for some perspective, because it's nice to talk about distributor counts, I really like looking at a volume of data collected. That represents roughly 2 million of approximately 7.5 million uh, motor bearing co condensing units for ACs and air shore seat pumps, so 30 to 35% of the market. Um, Similarly there, I think there are many different kinds of distributors. So the other thing we're looking at is what is the makeup of the participants? And in that case, we have a good cross section of, of who's um, actually involved in that program. Again, for confidentiality, I can't say who, but it is, uh, we have a nice makeup of a representative sample of the market. Do you have any examples of what the reporting looks like? Yeah, um, I, can you repeat the question just so we have it on uh, the video and then I, I can certainly answer. <laughs> I was asking if you had any samples of the reports and what they would look like or a dashboard that we would utilize? Uh, yes, absolutely. So that is um, in development, but we have a, I would call it a near final example of what that looks like. Um, Happy to give anybody who wants a demo. You can just stop over. Um, we're located right next to registration. If anybody wants to see the look and feel and what that will, what sort of filters are available out of the gates, um, please stop by. We're happy to give a quick demo to anybody who wants to. I, I will add, there was a, uh, an example in the video where they've got check boxes on one side and, and some line graphs on the other side. Very simple, very easy to use, very intuitive. Um, not not over engineered like some reporting you know products where it's designed for 18 different uses so you can't do the one thing that you need to do um, it is it is very simply designed and very very smooth to use is what I, we, what we found so far in testing right and, and also the downloads are very helpful as well we just implemented a new ERP system in our company a month and a half ago and now we have the ability to take the data off of the, the dashboards, download it, and add it to our uh, overall data stream so that we can use it for compensation for sales and, and regional managers and a variety of other things. And yes, Alex. And, and there is the <laughs> custom query tool as well. Yes. So um, although there is some standard reports that have drill down features, there is a custom query tool. So again, it, the information is all there. It's how it's relevant to your business, right? So you can create some custom queries and then save those reports. So that way when you um, open the tool again next month and all the next month's data is there, it would refresh and provide you that view of the tool or of the um, report that you've created um, with the new data as well. Okay, um, if there are no more questions, uh, again, uh, thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate everybody showing up on this rainy afternoon in Chicago. Um, if you have any questions for any of our panelists or uh, myself, please feel free to con come up on a talk. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll certainly be next to the registration desk for the rest of the day and into tomorrow. So uh, please feel free to come up and find me or any of my colleagues. We'd be happy to discuss more with you. With that, thank you and thank, and thank you to the panelists again.